we thank you. We thank you in joining us uh, today as we introduce our uh, Bishop Designee Jeanette Williams White, who is our speaker today, a woman of integrity, a dynamic speaker, a woman who loves God, a woman who is there for us whenever we ask and need, a woman who will give correction when correction is needed. So none other, let me introduce to you to none other but our over our Bishop Designee Jeanette Williams White. Amen. Let's give her a hand as she comes to us. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I tell you, the saints, they know how to make changes when we have difficulty uh, with the power. I, I didn't know if I would be in a car or if I was going to be at the church. I wanted to go to the church. Nobody would go with me and help me, Minister Robin. <laughs> But the Lord has made a way. The power came on. I went to the gym yesterday. I went to work out, but I also went to see if I could get their Wi-Fi going. And uh, that wasn't working out. So I continued to work out and got back up the street. And I tell you, within about 45 minutes, the power came on. I thank God. I thank God. Because he'll make a way when you try to make a way. If you put some effort for the Lord will make a way. So we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this morning. Uh, we pray now that the Lord will open your ears, that he'll open your eyes, that he'll open your taste buds, that you will see and taste that the Lord, he is good. We have been dealing with kingdom. Uh, I find it that it is a uh, needed area uh, to impact the body of Christ. Uh, there is uh, uh, one thing that we do uh, corporately, and we did as Zion, is we laid out our mission statement. Uh, we laid out the direction in which the Lord had given us as a body uh, as to our part to play in the vineyard. And even now today that we've had changes uh, due to the pandemic, the Lord has worked in that because he has allowed me to come before you uh, today and on many Sundays that have passed over the uh, months uh, on uh, Consider the Matter, just trying to get the word of God out. Uh, the evangelist, the Bible says, do the work of the evangelist. So it is up to the kingdom of God, us people of God, to fight this good fight while we may have a chance. Uh, it is all types of obstacles that have come, but it has caused us, and the word they're using is pivot, to just rearrange, to remanage, to rethink uh, the way in which we were doing. It's given us an opportunity like none other. Uh, the saints of God have found ways to evangelize, whether it be on all the social media platforms, uh, by paper, whatever is necessary to win a soul for the kingdom. So we're going to continue in kingdom. That is where we've been, and we're going to stay there until the Lord says different. But you know what about it? What I found out uh, in all of my studies, he will not change from kingdom. How do I know that? Because when you go to Matthew uh, chapter 16, uh, 19 through 20, and you read and you study, and Jesus said, for this cause have I come into the world. You know, he came with the cause and never changed. His cause was to bring kingdom into the earth. Uh, kingdom is to be in the earth uh, presently, and it is up to us as saints of God to bring kingdom, God's kingdom, into the earth. How else is the earth going to get it? We had the great fall that occurred back in Genesis chapter 1. And here we are still suffering the repercussions of that fall. But Jesus came along. 
Uh, he came along and he died at Calvary's cross. But the thing about it, not only his sacrificial death, he got up. So somebody need to know today. He got up now. He didn't stay there. His prophecy was that three days, three days, this whole kingdom is coming down. But after three days, I'm going to get up. Hey, hey, the Holy Spirit is pushing me and taking me somewhere. I can stay right there for a minute, but I'm trying to give you all some order to grasp this message. Please go to our social uh, media site, uh, YouTube, and pull kingdom down and follow as the Lord uh, impresses upon us to impress upon you because we have forgotten kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. Uh, we're looking at the culture <coughs> and allowing the culture to influence us uh, more than the kingdom of God's culture. Everything that we do must be about the kingdom of God. It is bringing the kingdom of God, which is in his glorious state, into the earth. And so the job is for us is how do we get kingdom from heaven, the desire when God created uh, this, this massive empire that he put in our hands, when he created it, what was the intent and what was on the mind of God? What did he uh, determine that, that earth would look like? Now we know that in the garden, Adam fell. And, and he went away from the intent. So here we are now, thousands and thousands of years later, uh, still working on this matter. And what is so interesting about that is that even with the written word of God brought down through the prophets, through Moses, uh, the Torah, the Pentateuch, uh, in New Testament, we yet still struggle with the word of God. I find that it's not a hard thing to understand, but it's that rebellious spirit that we continue to struggle with in the earth. But when you give your life to Christ, now I'm not talking about people who get up and say, oh, you know, I, I bless Lord Jesus, thank him for, we used to do that as kids. Praise him, you know, for his wonderful name and I bless my mommy and my daddy and my parents. No, 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 no. I'm talking about grabbing hold to the word of God in the intent of what is in God's mind that is released to you through the divinity of God that resides within your presence. Before Jesus left, he said, I'm going to send a comforter back for you. He said, look at here, if I don't go, if I don't go, then the Father, now you got to understand right there that God himself sent the Holy Spirit into the earth for us to have the divineness of God and who he is dwelling within us. Now, we don't just get that just, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm God, like, no, 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 no. It is a holy, the divinity of God is holy. The Holy Spirit of God, the manifestation of the triune God that resides in your body as to who you are. You got your soul, your spirit, and then you have your physical body that is encapsulate the divinity of who God is. And if we could hold that thought and walk out our daily life with that, knowing that God's presence resides in us, God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that created Adam, the God that spoke and said, fish be in the sea, stars in the sky, moon in the sky, Mars, Pluto. When we can grab hold 
to the, oh my shit, man, see, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This God that I'm talking about, just to think of that a little insignificant you and me, that he thought about us in the eons of time before we ever got here. I'm glad he didn't come yet. I'm glad because I might have missed him. But I thank God that he's given us time. His word says he wished he don't want nobody this, uh, to be lost. He wished that all souls would be saved. Uh, that's, that's, that's his desire. But my, my love Lovely husband said, uh, uh, Jeanette, he said, you can't save them all because I'll be frustrated and worried and, and try to get people to come to the Lord. And he said, you can't save them all. You got to remember there are some that will plant. There was some that will sow the seed, and there's a time for reaping, and there's a time of harvesting. But what we must know is that God, in his own divine time, he will do the separating. And when I go to Revelations, I understand that there is a day, there is a day that is coming, and there is a, a judgment that's coming. And now let me throw this principle out to you. You must understand it is not God's will that you be lost, but you have the opportunity now to make a decision on where you will spend eternity. Will you spend eternity in peace and in glory with him? Or will you spend it in a place called hell? I don't want to go to Hades. I don't want to be no part of that party. They tell me it's really hot. Me and my sister, we can't take the heat now. You know, we didn't got up in, uh, up in age and this, this heat too much for us now. I know I can't take hell. But what I want you to grab hold to today is the keys of the kingdom. That's Matthew 16, 19, and 20. And it reads like this. It says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Now, binding and loosing, and, and us uh, uh, Pentecostal folks, we have dealt with that for some time. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to give you some high points. Uh, of dealing with the keys to the kingdom. First of all, the keys of the kingdom are laws and customs that make society work. Our laws and our customs come from the scripture. They don't come from anywhere, anywhere else. Uh, so to try to pull in from everyday life the laws and the customs of our present society will not work in the kingdom. You got two opposing spiritual forces. The Bible teaches us that Satan, what is he, the prince of the air? So if he's the prince of the air and he's dictating in the air those who are submitted to him, because there I go over to James and James said, I know who your father is, paraphrasing, uh, either God, Jesus Christ, the triune God is your father or the devil. We only got two and they're two opposing forces. And so now, wow. Before Jesus returned, Satan is doing his work. He's on his job. He doesn't know who you are, but he watches your habits. He watches how you act. He watches what you say and what you do. And then he comes to you uh, with temptations. Now, the word of God said there's no temptation that we cannot overcome because we're covered by the blood of the lamb. So, you know, when you go into something uh, that is not of the kingdom, bad words, thoughts, that's not of the kingdom. You know, that comes from the devil. That's a time of repentance and getting closer 
to God. Now, back to the keys of the kingdom, laws and customs that make society work. Uh, their function depend on the Constitution, which is the word of God, and a body of law, which is the word of God, that create a context and reference for social behavior and relating to the government and other members of society. We are guided, children, by the word of God. If it don't fit in the word of God, then you know it's not of God. It is not of God. It is not according to the principles, uh, the apostolic creed, uh, Jesus, what he taught the disciples, which was for us. If it don't line up, then we say it as saints of God. If it don't line up with scripture, then you know that it's out of order. But you got to search the scripture to come to an understanding. We deal it with the keys of the kingdom. Our subject is I have the key. Now that's the subject. So you need to tell yourself, write it out. I have the keys. I have the keys. They've been given to you and left on record. Now, here we go. The uh, uh, the, 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 the result of this confine I've described is a culture of laws and principles that serve as regulations, values, morals, and standards that govern the citizens' uh, uh, relationship with the authority, the structure, and its disposition as it relates to expectations within the constitutional framework. So what did I say? The cultures, the laws, your behaviors toward your sisters and brothers. Scripture that comes to mind. How can you love God who you've never seen and hate your brother or your sister? How you are not going to forgive your sister or your brother when this is a part of the kingdom? Kingdom construct. We all make mistakes. We all do uh, things that are, are wrong. And some things we do knowingly. But because our flesh will dictate to us, our soul, my, my, my daughter just put up a heart. I'm going right into her message. Uh, because we've decided that I'm not going to forgive John or I'm not going to forgive Susie, but yet you say God, who you never seen, but you love him. Well, if you love God, you're going to walk according to his constitution and to the within the context of this construct. All nations and kingdoms, they contain inherent principles and laws that must be adhered to by each of its citizens in order for the citizen to benefit from his citizenship, his privileges, and his rights. What am I saying to you? You cannot benefit from the law of God if you do not apply it appropriately. We have all kind of laws. Some of the young people tell me, Nana, I don't need a driver's license to drive. And um, I was befuddled because I couldn't understand that. In other words, we can drive, we know how, but we don't have the authority under the law of the state. Oh my God, that's what they were saying today, Nana. I'm going to do it anyway. I, I understand the Constitution of uh, the Michigan, the state of Michigan, but you know what? That's not what I want to do. So they do what they want to do. Now, consequently, it usually involves me paying out money or going and getting them out of jail, but they'll make those kind of decisions. Now, they're young people, so we let them get away with it, so to speak. And then we pull the rank after we've given them so much line. And now I tell them, don't call me, pay your own bill. You get out of jail. But anyway, I'm going to go on. But these laws and principles are the keys. Now, here, this is pivotal. The laws and principles are the keys to the kingdom. Huh? We're talking about keys. 
authority and power by you having the key to my automobile, it gives you some authority to drive it. Those who come by and don't have a key to my automobile use another mechanism to get it in, to start it. They have no authority. They might have the power because they've used another mechanism, but they have no authority. In other words, they have bypassed the legal authority to have any rights to my motor vehicle and drive it. But they have used an alternative method to start that vehicle up and take off. A lot of us in, in the body of Christ do the same thing. We operate in areas that we have no business because we have no authority to operate there. If, I'm, if I am a ordained elder of the church, then I have the authority to marry. If I am a minister of the church, I am not given authority to marry. I, I may be a licensed minister to do the sacraments of the church, but I have no authority to marry. As an elder ordained, I have the authority to marry. You get me? You see where I'm going? Ministers operating in areas that an elder should operate. A elder, a elder must be, uh, 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 has to be an elder in order for you to occupy the position of overseer in the church. You must be an ordained elder. You see, you don't get to be an overseer in the church and you've never been an ordained elder. Why is that? Because you're not prepared at certain levels to have certain keys without the understanding, the input, the study, the time that is put in that will position you in the kingdom to be an elder. It takes time. I, I'm always amazed when I see such young people with great gold crosses on. Uh, my late bishop would say they haven't suffered enough to wear that cross. That would be her answer. Oh my God. But we must understand that the Bible has keys and the keys are scripture. The keys to the kingdom our scripture. That's why the book tells us, study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed. Why? Because when you have the scriptures and understanding of them, then you have the key. If you have the key and you don't have understanding, then you're going to fall into error. If you use the car, description I gave you with a key that has not been given to you legally, then you are operating outside the authority of God. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. So how do we use the scripture? Which key unlocks which door? What I found is the saints are not well studied, so they will use the wrong key trying to open up the door. Point. Look at here. This Bible say we must be holy as he is holy. Now, in order for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to rest with you and abide with you, you must be a holy vessel. What do I mean? You got to be cleaned up. You don't, you're not cussing. You're not laying up. You are hearing to the laws, which are the scriptures. Ah, the scriptures are the laws and they are the keys are hidden in the scripture. That's why we must study the scripture for understanding and clarity. Every time I read or study, there's more and more. There's something else that I saw that I didn't realize was there. Ah, just go back and study. You can read it today. 
And tomorrow, that same scripture will give you a different revelation. So which key unlock which door? That's why I tell people, when you write comments to me for me to pray, I need you to tell me what I'm praying for. This, I don't know where it came from, but this, I have an unspoken request. I don't see that in this Bible nowhere. What happens is the saints are praying amiss. That's a whole nother area of study. But the saints are praying amiss. In other words, we pray to hit the target. As our prayer leader, uh, uh, Minister Robin White, she said, no, no, we're praying for a specific reason. And we're asking God concerning the matter. And after that, we understand that we are submitted to the will of God when we ask him. Because some of us think we can live like hell and yet get in heaven. It don't work that way, baby. It don't work that way. No, 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 no. You must be obedient to the word of God. The Bible tells us that 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 what obedience is better than sacrifice. That means that it is better to be obedient and wear a mask than to catch coronavirus. Why are you throwing about all your rights that you have and you don't have to wear a mask? The Bible teaches us that obedience is better than sacrifice. The sacrifice is you catching coronavirus. Yesterday, I was exposed. Or yesterday, Friday. Friday, I had to go to a prosecutor's office and come to find out I got a call yesterday that that particular prosecutor husband was positive for COVID. So they were tracing to let me know that that person's husband was positive. But the person I came in contact with had a mask on. You all know uh, the bishop. I had a mask on. I had gloves on. And I kept everybody away from me because I'm going to be obedient. I got to be here to get the word of God out. I don't have time to be throwing up some kind of rights and on some, some, some trail that makes no sense. People are trying to save your life. But look, the word of obedience is hidden from those who do not serve God. They don't understand that they're, not, they're to be a dis obedient. If you love God, you love his people, you're going to do what is necessary to protect the people of God. You want to do what is necessary to protect your children, your aunties, your nanas, your grandpas. Don't you know until the prophet speaks and comes forth, you better wait on this word from the prayer warriors. When my prayer warriors tell me, overseer, bishop, designate, you can take off the mask. Now, that's when I'll be taking it off. I ain't taking it off till I get a clear word from God. And they not told, they have not told me that yet. So I must be obedient. Get that, get that obedience. I'm hearing that ringing. But the key that unlocks the door is scripture. Now get this point, because I don't have long. Having knowledge, but not knowing how to use your key is ineffective. I can have knowledge of scripture all day long. That Jesus' mother's name was Mary. Uh, he was born uh, incarnate. Uh, you know, I can have knowledge that John was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. I have the knowledge uh, that, that Peter had. And when the question was asked by Jesus who he was, Peter said, you're Jesus, the son of the living God. And he told Peter, he said, uh, flesh and blood. See, this stuff here, that, that didn't give that to you. That was divine that came uh, to Peter. And yet we know the story of Peter. So because you get a divine revelation, don't give you the lockdown on the total word of God. You got to go back and you got to study and study and study. And the Holy Spirit 
that is indwelling in you is going to illuminate, which means to open up the revelation of scripture. There will, don't believe it, it's a lie and it's a trick. Don't believe that there's a new word from God. There is no new word. It's right here in scripture. Everything that you're seeing today is right here in scripture. All you have to do is study it for yourself. Study it. Break it down. Get your concordance. If you don't know, send me a send me a, a text or make put it in the comment section. I'll give you a library roll of how to break down the word of God. The word of God is broke down in systems. You can look at it from a systematic theological perspective. You can look at it from an apologetic perspective. There are differences as how to uh, unravel the word of God. You can look back at Josephus and look at the historian. From his writings, we were able to conclude uh, that Jesus' brother James was the first bishop in Jerusalem. And today, how it was uh, formulated in that time and the intent of God, we have gotten away from it. But yet and still, it's right here in scripture, and that don't change. But I don't want to get off the kingdom. I want to hit you with just a little more, and then I'm going to let it go and come back to it. Uh, 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 uh. But having all the power and not knowing how to apply it is ineffective. So you can know all the words you want to know, all of it. But if you don't know how to apply, if you have a key, and the key is for a car and not for a door. It is never going to open it. I hear people praying prayers. They be using the wrong key. You must study to understand what key unlocks what door. If a person needs healing, the word of God says, sit for the elders of church. Let them pray the prayer of faith. And then the person shall be healed. So why do you want to send an elder that's in sin? He might know the key, but it won't work. Ah, uh, he may have the key, but if he don't have the understanding and the knowledge and the life that goes with it, it is not going to open the door. So life in the kingdom is really about returning, returning to the governing authority of God in the earth. Uh, everybody want to want to want to go to heaven but don't nobody want to die. Uh, that's what the old folk used to tell us. But look ahead, look ahead. Your heaven is right here in this earth. How? You got to put it down, pull it down, pull it down. When we study uh, 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 about the, the, the uh, wickedness in the earth and, and the, 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 the veiling over, uh, looking at spiritual warfare, we understand the more occupying of territory, the greater our authority in the earth, the greater the saints occupy the spaces with holiness, holiness without no man shall see the Lord, with holiness and, and, and verge upon, converge upon a atmosphere, demons got to leave. You got to know the key and the principle. If we're dealing in spiritual warfare, we must take the authority. How do you take the authority? Through worship. Through prayer, we take the authority. That is the key to controlling an atmosphere. When the saints move out of an area, then the enemy, the devil, the demons will come in and occupy that space. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you backslide and go away, then you got a bunch of demons, seven times seven, that come back worse than the ones that you had before because they want to sit up house and rulership. That's why you got to keep your body holy. Your first worship is holiness. It's to present yourself a holy vessel before the Lord. Now, that 
is the key. If you don't present your vessel before a holy God, how are you going to master and control an area uh, 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 of demons? When the demons saw Jesus come up, he got out of the boat, they went to run and said, Jesus, why have you come before our time? It's not our time. Jesus told them to shut up. They said, can we go into the swine? They wanted somewhere to go. Why? Because demons occupy bodies. They occupy bodies and they occupy human bodies when we allow them to, and then they take control. You talking about all this mind stuff going on? What do you think that is? That's not of the kingdom of God, but you have allowed yourself, put yourself in place for demonic influences can speak to you in the night. Uh, they don't know who you are. But if you're a child of God, but they'll try to talk to you, you got to have that word going on, all kind of craziness. But again, the kingdom and the keys, using the right key for the right problem. The life in the kingdom is really about returning to the governing authority of God in the earth. So we have to pull down from heaven into the earth, the heavenly realm. It's not, they not coming on their own, but when you submit your life in prayer and supplication and you cry out to God, the Lord himself will send his rescue party to your, uh, 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 your defense. When you look back at Moses, I can remember that right off the top of my head. When the cry of the people went up to God, he heard him and he said, oh, I've got to go down and see about my children. I'm going to go down and answer them. A principle I learned looking at the apostolic grid, the apostolic compass, there is a level on that grid that we have to get to as the saints of God in prayer, and it moves like your thermometer, the grid, the same principle. It moves like your thermometer. Your, your temperature might be 93.5. It might be 96. It might be 98.5, but when your temperature hits 100, 100.2, 100.4, if you don't get to a hospital somewhere, somewhere quick and get that temperature down, it's going to be, it's going to be a sad story because your body was not made or created to hold temperatures of that level. How did we know that disease is present? The temperature is too hot. I hear the Holy Ghost. Your temperature is too hot. How do we know infection is in the body? The temperature of your body is too high. What am I saying? I'm going to bring it home to you. Now, when the temperature of the saints in the church is too high, we're going to have outbreak because our temperature is not at what a level that we call normalcy. For the human body, 96.5, 97.8, 98.2. okay. We're in the safety zone as a human body. Don't you know our spiritual temperature is the same when we get on the grid of God? How about she? Get on the apostolic grid of God when the cry went up to a certain level. Then God heard the people and he said, I must send my deliverer. Here come Moses on the scene. So here we are in this place, in a pandemic, when the grid got too high, God said, let me send them an answer. They not ready to come out yet, but they need that temperature to come down. They need that grid uh, to come down, the temperature level of where they are in the earth. Now, not that 
we have been so good that he has allowed uh, uh, other doctors, Fauci and them guys, to come up with uh, 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 a vaccine. While I'm there, while I'm there, the vaccine is not a cure. The vaccine is a help. It is a helper if you should come in contact with the virus. Now, so the Lord has allowed this. So in other words, what did he do? He shifted us from 102.5 down to about 99.1. What happened, saints? Did you go back to doing what you were doing prior pandemic? Or did you pivot and start doing things uh, differently? Did you repent? Did you repent and tell God that I'm sorry, Lord, because I didn't get off the grid? Did you talk to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry we got off the grid. Now I've come back before you, God. Help us, Lord. And look at the grid now in the United States and around the country. The temperature is going back up. Why? Saints of God, we got to take the apostolic authority in the heavens and in the atmosphere. God has given us keys to the kingdom. I got to close it. I can't go all the way. So the next time they let me preach, I'm coming right back with it. The apostolic grid has gone up before God. The temperature got too hot. And what happened? He sat down and serves. But what have we done? We're trying to go back to the same way we were. And the devil is a, li a liar and him and all his imps be damned because it's not of God. We got to reimagine who we are. We got to be able to see into the future as to what God wants us to be. Once we can see it, Spiritually, we can bring it back and create it in the natural. Why? Because he's given us keys to the kingdom. And I'm out of time. But God bless you. For the backslider, I am crying out, come home. Backslider, Zion Worship Center is a safe place. We love the people of God. Zion Worship Center, located 2131 Pine Street in Wyandotte, Michigan. We're on all the social medias as we are today. We had not fully gone back into the building because we didn't get the release yet. And when I look around and see what happened, just the little experience I had yesterday, we've got to take care of the people of God by any means necessary. For those who have not given their life to Christ, all you got to do is believe in your heart, confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's Savior, and you want him to come in and occupy your space in your heart to be your Lord and your savior. And he will do it. I promise you, God will do it. You can look on our social media sites. Please, please give us a call. Come see us. Talk to us. We have a, a prayer call out. And in the comment section, tell the bishop what you want to be prayed for about. And I am going to pray for you personally. So look for me, I will hit you up. You hit me up. The key has taught me that. And I love you. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Kingdom. It's about kingdom. God bless you until we see you again.